Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to utilize a combiner box with the 12,000 XP. I did discuss this briefly on another video I did on the 12,000 XP on how to max out your solar. And like I talked about in that video, using a combiner box is going to be your easiest and safest way to do it. So you could probably easily get around 18,000 watts of solar on this unit without a combiner box. But if you want that last little bit to get to you to the 24,000 watt range is what it can take. So 24 kilowatts, which is 12,000 watts on each input, then you're going to need a combiner box. So I'm going to show you guys an 8-4 combiner box, and I will show you what that means also, what those numbers mean. But that isn't the only combiner box you can use. I did talk about in the last video how you could use a 4-2 combiner box and have two strings running from the array. So hopefully this will make more sense as I get into the video and show you guys the combiner box. And also I got the new conduit box in that is compatible with the 12,000 XP. So I'm going to show you those new boxes and you actually assemble them. So I'll show you that whole process. All right, well, I'm going to set the camera up above the combiner box and we will jump right in. All right, so Watts 24-7 carries this combiner box. And because this is an 8-4, this takes in a lot of solar, and so it's a pretty large box. It comes with these screws to mount a plexiglass plate inside to guard the wire. And it does have a key here. These are outdoor rated boxes. Now, to understand this a little better, it probably would be a good idea to go back to the previous video if you guys haven't seen it before that I did on the 12,000 XP. Because what you're trying to accomplish is sending three strings of solar into the 12,000 XP. Jumping back over to the 12,000 XP really quick, so I'm interrupting your regular programming. So what I mean by three strings is these are already going to be combined in the combiner box, and that's actually what I'm talking about now. And then this is going to be the second string. So you'd have two strings that are actually combined before they get here. So that's two and one. And then we have a third right here. And you would do the same with input two. So you've got one, two, and three to equal that 12,000 watts. But you only have two different inputs on input one and two different inputs on input two. So you can put two strings into the 12,000 XP without an issue but you really wanted to put three in it. So how to accomplish that in the easiest and safest way is really the question or the goal. All right, so this 8-4 combiner box looks pretty intimidating at first if you haven't looked inside of a combiner box before, but it's actually not that bad. So if you were to break it down to a 4-2 combiner box, which I discussed in my last video, then it would just be this right here. So you just have four different inputs, two different outputs. So for some of you, it may be easier to think of it as a parallel box instead of a combiner box, because really you're just paralleling strings. In this case, you're going to want two strings tied together and turned into one as it comes back out. So all these combiner boxes are, are going to come with a map and they're going to show you exactly what's going on here. So up top, you can see these are diodes and it even describes that here on the map. And then it shows you A1, A2. So this is where your first strings are going to come in to the unit. So let's say you've got two 3500 watt strings coming in from a solar array and you want to combine them in here. So this gives a safe way to combine the two strings into one string. You could actually look at it like this if you guys have ever seen these three-way Polaris splices. The combiner box is going to be doing the safe, same thing essentially it's going to be combining string one, string two, and then out this string coming out will be going to your inverter. But because you're paralleling, it's going to be double the amperage. So the voltage is going to stay the same, but this third leg here, as it goes out to the inverter, is going to have double the amperage. So if you're leading one positive in here, another positive in here, the positive coming out here is going to be double the amperage. So let's say your array has 10 amps. Coming out of here, it's going to be a 20 amp string, the same voltage as you put in it. So if it's 350 volts and 350 volts and 10, amp, 10 amps, 10 amps, it's going to be a 350 volt string coming out at 20 amps. I hope that makes sense. So coming back to the map here, we have A1 and A2. And that is going to be the first string. Up here is A1, A2 positive. Down here is A1, A2 
negative. And once those two strings are combined, you'll see they're going to output with A output right here. So you've got A1 and A2 tied together, and then it's going to come out right here. And then same thing with the negative, just like I showed you on that Polaris splice. You're just combining two strings and making them one coming out, doubling that amperage. So I often mention putting ferrules on your stranded wire. So yeah, that's an easy, easy thing to do. So definitely get a ferrule crimper. I, I usually put a link in the description to all my videos. They're super cheap and they come with the ferrules. So this is just an example here. You see the negatives down below. This is going to be input A1 and A2. And then I'm going to do the same with the positive up above. If you've got a 4-2 uh, combiner box, everything is just going to be right down there at the bottom. So it'll be um, positives on one side and negatives on the other. But as long as you follow the map, it's not a problem at all. Also, the uh, surge protection on the right, I didn't even mention that. But these do come with built-in surge protection. I always recommend adding something else. Um, I recommend the midnight surge protectors. I've done videos on that before. Or the... EMP shields. So we didn't necessarily need an 8-4 combiner box. We could have used a smaller one, like I mentioned before, but this gives a means of disconnect for that extra string you're going to be bringing in, that third string, and a fuse disconnect. So it's actually nice to have. It gives you another place to put that extra surge protection if you want to do that. So yeah, that's why I included, or I'm showing you guys the larger combiner box, but it could be done with a smaller one. Anyway, this string 1 here, the string A1 and A2 could be 8,000 watts. And then your additional string on B could just be a single string. You're bringing in from the array and sending into here and then sending straight back out to the inverter. So the two top blue breakers that you see up there would be 8,000 watts on the left, 4,000 watts on the right if you do it this way. And then you would do the exact same thing with the ones down below so you'd bring the next strings in it would be 8,000 watts and 4,000 watts that's why the 8.4 would be nicer overall in my opinion even though that extra string there isn't being combined with anything it's basically going straight in and then right back out of that breaker and I should mention we're definitely not doing any of this work while the solar panels are actually hooked up so if you don't have a disconnect out there you're not gonna have anything hooked up one way or another you do not want any solar power on these lines before you operate. So that should go without saying, but I'm saying it. Also on the bottom right, you guys will see some screws down there. That's a grounding bar. So that's where the grounds from your array would go. And then you can send it from there to a proper location of your choosing for grounding. I'm not even going to get into that. But yeah, then uh, you can also put your surge protection on that too. If you add extra surge protection, like I mentioned the ground can go onto that bar. All right, I've got the plexiglass put in. I peeled all the mess off. I had to use my heat gun because it's so chilly in the shop. I didn't want to come off of the plexiglass. So let's say you did it like I did it here with the 8-4 combiner box. So you've got these two coming in, these two strings coming in. That's not an issue. Now we know that there's going to be 8,000 watts because in our hypothetical strings, we have 4,000 watts and 4,000 watts, positive, negative, and they're going to be outputting right here at 8,000 watts because they've been combined together. But if you send that third string in, like I said, just for protection, that can output right here. And that is gonna be 4,000 watts. So you've got four, four, and four. So 8,000 on this one. This next input can be, this next output can be 4,000 watts. And let me show you over here at the 12,000 XP. So here we are over here at the 12,000 XP. And we have the first input, which could be that 8,000 watts, like I just mentioned before. Let's say it's 8,000 watts and 20 amps in our hypothetical string. And then the second string we're sending out of the combiner box is the 4,000 that we're basically just putting in there, like I said, to add fuses to it, another means of disconnect. And so that's going to go on PV1 as well. And then that would mean you have 8,000 watts and 4,000 watts, so you have 12,000 watts on MPPT1. And you'll repeat the exact same thing on MPPT2. This will be a combined string, and this will be an additional 4,000 watts. It really doesn't matter. Like, you can put it on here instead if you wanted. You could put the 4,000 here and the 8,000 there. But this is just 
a idea on how to max that wattage out. And this is actually why I've described these type of inputs as almost their own combiner box in the past, because these are parallel inputs. So four different inputs for one MPPT. So it's a miniature combiner box right here, just like we described before. It's combining them right here in the inverter. And the 18 kPV has that, the 12 kPV has that as well. So this is what the wireway looked like when I got my last one. So this was the indoor model, and this was compatible with the 6000 XP. And I'll show you what the new one looks like now. So here's the new one, and it actually comes in this really thin box here. As a matter of fact, when I got my latest order, I was thinking that they didn't include the wireway because I didn't know they came like this now. So this is what the knockouts look like on the new one. This is actually what is compatible with the 6000 XP. And these knockouts are actually for, so the front ones here would be for the hybrid models. So this, is, this would be for the 18 kPV, the 12 kPV, the flex boss, all that. The back would be for the 6000 XP. If you look online, they actually have a separate one for the 12,000 XP. So maybe in the future, they're gonna include that with the boxes, I don't know, but let me show you that plate. So here's the top plate for the 12,000 XP. And actually, if you guys noticed, the other one, this was as big as it was for the 6,000 XP. But yeah, this one goes all the way back to here because there's actually a few knockouts, one or two, that are actually towards the back on the 12,000 XP. And while in a perfect world, you would have the exact same knockouts on every unit, I actually talked about that with them and it is extremely difficult. So this has been something they've been working on for a while. And I think this is a pretty good solution as far as for the indoor units. This is pretty neat right here because you can just have the entire slot open and not have to worry about a bunch of separate knockouts for the indoor units. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this box here. I don't expect it to be very difficult. Let me check it out. I didn't record the assembly. Like I said, pretty basic. The one thing to remember is that you do have to put the ground on the left because that's where the ground is on the pro battery. So if you pay attention to that, the rest is pretty intuitive, not complicated at all. All right, so I pop both of these out and they do send caps, so you can put them here if you want to. I'm just gonna leave these blank, but yeah, you can put these in instead if you want. All right, so I got the new box in. A bit of a pain to put in just because this conduit was rigid. So I had to feed it in there and I was trying to just coax it all back into place without removing absolutely everything. I mean, of course, I had to remove the wire, but wasn't that big of a deal. So one critique, um, the conduit box did not come with any kind of grommets or anything to be able to uh, put around in these knockouts. Now, I know the entire bottom's empty now, which I actually prefer, but I think it still needs some kind of grommet right here because I don't want any wires fraying on the edge. So it did come with some. These are for the 18 kPV and the 12 kPV. So for these knockouts here, but it didn't come with any that were compatible with here. I think these are inch and a half and these are two inch. But yeah, it didn't come with anything compatible with the 12,000 XP and maybe it does now. Like I said, I know this kit is, um, I had to get this separate and maybe going forward, they're gonna be sending this with the new indoor kit and so maybe at that point they will have something for these. But yeah, that's the one thing I've noticed. All right, that's all buttoned up. It took a few minutes to get everything straight, but not bad. Uh, I do miss the door though. I, I like the full notch, like I said, that they cut out in the back. Uh, I do miss the latch and the door though. Although you're really not gonna be going into this conduit box very often at all once you get everything installed, or you shouldn't be anyway. All right, guys, well, that's gonna about do it for this one. Not a super long video, I know, but hopefully it helped in regards to this box or the combiner box. And if you need any further clarity on either one, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see if I can help answer it. I've mentioned this in other videos, but these systems really are getting easier and easier to install. But that does bring up a good point. No matter how easy they do get to install, you still need to read the manual on these units. And I mention that because of the emails and messages I get. And I don't mind those emails and messages. And I've been there myself. I've had to do the same. But a lot of those questions could be answered by reading the manual. Plus, there's some safety tips in there. And you want to read up on the different wire gauges you're going to need, the capacity of the inverter. 
the battery capacity you're going to need to power the inverter, all that info can be found in the manual. So even before you order one of these units, you can look at the online manual and see a lot of them don't even come with paper manuals anymore. So you're gonna have to look online either way. So as always, I do leave a link in the description below. So if you go to that link, there's always a spec sheet down below and you can read the specs on the inverter and then there's a manual down below as well. Then of course, there's always stuff you can't spot in there or can't find or a different use case that isn't even listed in the manual. So yeah, you can definitely ask questions also. I always do. But either way, yeah, the manual is usually the first step. And then once you have it in your hands, you can actually understand it a little easier. So sometimes it's sort of like a concept until you can actually see the physical inverter. I'm actually that way, I'm pretty hands-on, so once I get the unit, then I can understand a little better what the manual is trying to describe if it sounds a little complicated. So yeah, I'm glad I got this button back up. I'm actually pretty excited. I'm gonna be doing some work on the far side of the room. So the main system that I normally use to power the house, I'm going to be doing a bit of an overhaul on that. So in the meantime, I'm gonna be moving some batteries over here and the 12,000 XP is gonna be taking care of the house. It's gonna be babysitting while I have uh, everything apart on the other side of the room. And I know it'll do fine. The 12,000 XP has done great with all the house loads. But yeah, I've actually got quite a bit of stuff that I'm gonna be doing on the other side of the room. So I'll make sure to record as much of that as possible. It should be pretty fun. All right, guys. Well, as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned.